Right, hi there guys, this is Alan with another best out of one um, Order Spark um, ranked draft. Um, I'm sticking with Order Spark for now because I'm tired of the um, endless mill decks that are being um, played in Throne of Eldraine. I think they're pretty boring, they're not fun, and um, yeah, they're pretty cancerous. Um, so um, they need to fix the bots, otherwise, um, yeah, it's it's going to be one of those formats that I'm just going to draft in paper. So. Um, Let's do a Ward of Spark. Alright. Pack one, pick one. What is our rare? Parhelion 2. Hmm. Is really powerful. Um, if you can get to 8 mana. And usually you want to pair this up with um, green. Since they have all the ramp creatures going on. Um, regardless, it is pretty powerful if you can pull this off. Flying, First Strike, and Vigilance. Um, whenever it attacks, um, it just creates two 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens um, with flying and vigilance that are attacking already. It does require you to have a power of 4 on the battlefield before this actually becomes relevant. But either way, if you are playing green, um, this is playing this in the green deck, this is definitely really powerful. Um, would I play this in a, you know, just a normal white deck, white blue or white red? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it's, it's, it basically wins you the game if you can pull off the attack. So I uh, might consider this um, definitely a powerful card if you can get going. Um, so what are our uncommons? Tibalt stands out as an excellent three drop planeswalker. Um, just being able to um, create devil creature tokens is really nice. That can trade off for any potential two toughness creatures or deal one damage to um, creatures with one toughness seems really nice. Um, what else? Rouse Outburst is great, but again, it pairs well with two colors, so probably not to pick here. Um, look at the commons, where are the ones that stand out? There's a Spell Gorge of Weird. If we want to play in a more blue uh, red spells deck, it can definitely. Um, grow really large but um, again you are putting your eggs into one basket with this card simply because if you end up growing it the opponent could just remove it and you it just ends up dying and it doesn't get a ton of value um, so um, but definitely a great card in that respective deck I, I mean I would even play this in even a black red deck or a green red deck given the fact that um, there's a plenty of non-creature spells in this format and getting one or two counters on this is really good um, and then there's Palm Bright Druid as an excellent two drop with the ability to put counters on a creature and proliferate. So given this pick one, pack one, um, I think the strongest, the two cards I would pick are just Parhelion 2 and Tabalt over to Spell Gorge or Weird and the Palm Bright Druid. Simply because these cards are, um, Tabalt is just better by itself while these other two cards, um, I don't think they're, they're weaker in power level and um, they fit better in respective archetypes already. I mean, Palm Bright of Druid is flexible and excellent in any green deck, but I think the power level of Tabalt is much more higher. So now the question is, do I take Parhelion 2 or Tabalt? Um, Parhelion 2 is fun, but again, it is expensive. You need to get to 8 mana, and you need to have a power or 4 onto the battlefield before you can attack with this. Um, I think it's still worth trying out, simply because if you get this to attack once, you basically win the game. It does better in green-white of course, simply because you have the ability to ramp and get there. But overall, it is quite expensive. But, um, I mean, I just might as well try it out. Um, just because it can win the game by itself. Tabalt is excellent, but it can't really win the game sometimes by itself. It does require you to fit into a more specific um, archetype, most likely Black Red, in which you have a lot of sacrifice fars and the 1-1 Red Devils um, produce those tokens for sacrifice. But I think it's excellent in, you know, even a red-blue deck or a red-black deck overall. Really flexible, but um, I think Parhelion 2 is worth risking since it can win this games by itself that we just take it here. Um, haven't ever, I was, I've always been hesitant of drafting this card in War to Spark simply because of the mana cost, but now I can see why it might be worth taking in a pick one, pack one scenario. It can just be a bomb if you get this off, so, uh, let's try it out here. Alright, follow up with Par Parhelion 2. What is there in this pack? There's a Sahili as a great payoff for a Blue-Red Spells Matters deck. 
doesn't really fit well with our first pick. Um, of course, you could play this for single color for, you know, red or blue, but much preferably, you'd rather just play this card in a deck in a blue-red Spells Matters um, instant speed sorcery deck. Um, so, uh, um, it is... It, it does pair well with Parhelion because it's a uh, non-creature, but this is a mana, come on. Um, so what are the excellent commons? We're looking at Spark Harvest as a nice, flexible choice um, in case white isn't open, or we can just stick with um, white-black life gain. And there should be enough creatures in that archetype, which in case we move into 8 mana, that the crew ability is relevant, and we can just get this to attack and win the game on spot. So it's just really between these two. Um, do we take the more flexible black card that just destroys a creature um, in case white isn't open, um, works well in white black, or do we just try to take a gamble on the blue red spells matters deck? And I think I'm willing to uh, just take the spark harvest for now. Um, uh, stick with um, uh, not not try to commit myself to an archetype right away and uh, just pick up the spark harvest here. So let's just take it. And now what? Um, if we picked up the um, the the, the uh, Sahili, we'd be looking at this Invade the City, which I don't even think it's that great, honestly, in a um, blue-red Spells Matters deck. Um, you might get a giant amass creature token, which is basically your goal, but it can easily get bounced, killed by any bounce spells, um, any removal spells, whatnot. But eh, I think it's actually pretty fine, but you do need to prep this card by putting a lot of cards in the graveyard um, first. Instances and sorcery spells, whatnot. Um, so now what? Looking at the commons, um, there's War Screecher, which is a fine two-drop. Um, Total Evasion I wouldn't mind as a nice card for a card. Um, um, you know, and making a mass token is pretty powerful. Um, there's also Band Together as an excellent removal spell in case maybe black isn't open we can pivot towards into green and green is the color you will most likely want to pair with the par healing simply because it has the ramp to get you to that eight mana and big creatures to allow the crew ability to happen so i don't mind a band together um total invasion is actually a pretty good card as well um it would stick us more heavily to black but um i don't think the power of the le level of this is so significant Compared to Band Together, I mean, they're almost equal, perhaps. Maybe Band Together is even better, because it can at least deal with a creature onto the battlefield. And this gets worse in the late game, when the opponent um, has emptied their hand. This is a card you really want in the early game, not the late game, so it does have some drawbacks. So yeah, I think we just take the removal spell, remain flexible. We could just be black-green, white-green, whatnot, white-black, so... Let's not to commit to anything too um, seriously, unless we until we finally got clear signals. So now what? Rebel Ryers is fine in a blue, in a green-red deck, um, but we haven't picked up any red lately. Um, I mean, the white card is mediocre. Um, blue is fine. So all these cards are just pretty much okay. I mean, even Iron Bully, even though it's colorless, is okay. Works better than a proliferate archetype. So which card are we looking at here? There's a Giant Growth as a fine combat trick, nothing else. Honor God Pharaoh's okay. Um, Vampire Opportunist is a decent card. I mean, it's fine in black, green, and it does have that life gain synergy, but this is way too expensive to get going. So, I mean, I guess we just could just take the best card in this pack, being Rubble Bolt Riders. Maybe red, green is just more open. Um, so, I don't really feel like I'm missing out on much just taking this, so let's just take it here. And now what? Well, there's a Trusted Pegasus as a nice evasive flyer at 3 mana for the white deck. Um, Tamiyo's Epiphany is excellent, of course, but it would put us into a 5th um, color. Um, there's a Heartfire in case we move into a more sacrificing red deck. Um, but I think the best card for us here is just a Trusted Pegasus. Um, keeps our option open in white. Um, and uh, so we can get towards our Parhelion goal that we're looking to aim for. So happy taking it here. Ooh, another trust to Pegasus. I think I like it more than Bond of Discipline. Didn't Bond, of, Bond of Discipline is a fine way to finish the game, fine finisher. But um, other than that, uh, I rather prefer the creature. Um, there's a Burning Prophet in this pack as an excellent two-drop in any red deck. Snare Spinner would be fine as well. Um, but I don't think any. I think having a lot of trusted Pegasus in an aggressive white deck is really powerful. And then we can curve the top with Parhelion two in the late game to finish off the opponent. 
So like in here, definitely an excellent card to have an aggressive white deck. Um, now what? I guess these cards are kind of replaceable. Not a big fan of Hoatli. Um, you do need a lot of creatures with um, high toughness in order to get the payoff to work. Even then, it's just a Planeswalker that the opponent can just kill off. And you don't want to make this your only win condition. Otherwise, um, if this gets killed off, you're just going to have a bunch of high toughness creatures sitting around doing nothing. So I don't think this card is that great. I don't think it's an excellent build around. Even in... White. White doesn't have a lot of high toughness creatures, believe it or not. Uh, most of them are low toughness and you want to be low to the ground and aggressive. Same with Green. Green doesn't really have a lot of high toughness creatures that I care too much about. Um, so what is in this pack? Nothing, I guess. There's a battlefield promotion in case we want to combat trick some life and uh, a decent trade that we can win. So yeah, just take it here. Um, now what? There's a Martyr Cause that goes well in any white deck as a fine 2-drop. Bolt Bend is a fine green-red payoff um, for the Rebel Belt Runners. And Bandit Garibut is not that amazing and powerful. Um, you would like to cast this for 1 mana for the most part, so you need to commit heavily to red-green. Um, which I don't know if we're really committing it due to the fact that we uh, picked up a bunch of white cards. So I guess we can put the Rebel Belt Riders away for now. Don't think we're really committing to red green given that we picked up all these white cards. And maybe just take Martyr as a decent two drop in case we move into a more proliferate heavy deck. There's also a hard fire, but um, again, that works better in a more sacrifice deck like in black red. Um, can be fine in white red, um, but you don't want to throw away creatures like that. And you do want to, to preserve creatures in white given like you want cards like Trust's Pegasus to get them flying to attack through. So uh, stick a Martyr here. Uh, don't hate a Pouncing Lynx. There's also a Crawl Stinger, which is a fine three drop as well in the white deck. Um, it works well with Band Together, but I don't think the power level is this great, that great, unless you have like triple Band Togethers or something, and we don't know if we're going to green. So uh, I actually don't hate the Pouncing Lynx as a fine two drop. It's great if you can put give this card a counter, and then um, you can attack a 3-2 first striker on your turn, which is excellent. And white is looking to be aggressive. We do have double trust the Pegasus. Um, I think we wanted to keep white as our primary color, so um, don't hate the Pouncing Lynx as a mediocre 2-drop here. Let's just take it. And another Martyr for the cause. Why not? Other than that, there's nothing in this pack. There's Price of Betrayal, but that's more of a sideboard card. Um, can kill a Planeswalker, maybe in a mass creature. So, uh, actually don't hate it here. But Sometimes you just want a more solid removal spell that uh, Martyr for the cause. We maybe just want to clog up our two drops with white and we just take a Martyr here. Again, another Battlefield promotion. Don't know if I'm playing a second one. Maybe we play it. Who knows? Uh, maybe I end up playing this Lockstone in case I need a filler four drop. And same argument with the Silverwing. Right, so looking at the second pack, what are we looking at? Uh, we're looking to stick with white as our primary color. Um, we're looking for to maybe go into black or green, depending on what bombs we open on the second pack. We would prefer green, again, to cast a Sparhelion, but um, um, if we don't get there, we can just cut this Sparhelion, make a more well-rounded, low to low-curve green, white aggressive deck. So um, yeah, let's stick with uh, white for now. And what did we open up? Well, Casualty Tease of War is an excellent um, card. However, um, it's not in the colors that we're in. Uh, Grateful Apparition is an excellent two drop. It's powerful by itself. Great for any proliferate deck, most likely green, white, or green, blue. So, I mean, green, white, or um, yeah, green, white, or green, blue. But even in green, black, and um, I mean, white, black, or um, white, red. Um, you tend to have some mass creatures, planeswalkers, and counters. So uh, having this attack and then proliferate it seems pretty strong. Um, what else is there? There's Wally's Raptor, but I definitely take the apparition over it. Our commons, we are looking at some excellent commons. Um, Law Room Forces, one of the best commons in white. We do have a hole at one, and we could use one to lock down creatures in the early game and um, and punch in for and uh, start pushing in for a lot of damage there's an Aven Eternal which is excellent in blue but we didn't pick up any blue cards 
Spell Gorger Weird, it's good. Um, so I think the pack really is just between Grateful Apparition and La Rune Enforcer. In terms of proliferate um, encounters, we didn't pick up much at all. We could pick up more in the future, I guess, but currently we don't have any, and that can be a problem. Um, it's also a nice evasive flyer, though, for one mana, for two mana, so you can start attacking him for two. But we have double trust to Pegasus, which should give our creatures flying already. So, um, I mean, I don't really know if we're going to commit to a proliferate archetype. I mean, this could be better off if we end up that way. Um, but, I mean, Law Room Forcer is excellent as well for any aggressive white deck. And um, we do have Double Martyr as a way to proliferate already. We didn't pick up any proliferate cards in general. So, as crazy as it seems, I might just be leaning towards the Law Ruin Enforcer as a way to, you know, lock down creatures and get in for a little for some damage. And this also plays well defensively as well. Maybe I could be wrong. Maybe it's fine, just better just taking the Grateful Apparition as an excellent two drop. But we would need to prioritize a lot more counters, which we didn't take any yet. So, um, yeah, I think it's just the Law Ruin Enforcer. This is just an excellent common at one, and we are looking to be very aggressive. And this can just lock down a creature and just push damage in the early game and in the late game as well. So let's just take it here. Uh, now what? Um, there's a Tabalt Rager as an excellent two in red. There's a Divine Arrow, which is a nice interaction spell in blue. Uh, same with Cal. I mean white. There's Cal's and Missiles, an excellent interaction spell in blue, but we didn't pick up any blue cards. Spark Reaver is fine, um, better in a more sacrifice heavy deck, there's an Iron Bully to put counters in. I think the choice here is just Divine Arrow, we currently don't have any interaction in white, other than maybe this Law Rune Enforcer, and we don't know our second color, we could be black, we could be green. I'm um, just taking our first Divine Arrow here, seems like a nice way to deal with blockers or attackers, so uh, let's take it here. Ooh, Grateful Apparition, like this, it's still in the pack, seems like white is fairly open there's also a davri davriel um if we want to commit to um black more heavily it is definitely great in an aggressive white deck simply because you in an aggressive deck simply because you are clogging the ground early in the game with blockers um then putting this out you manage to maybe even two for one or three for one an opponent with the davriel just making them discard a card and then making them discard another one another ones and so forth and then in the late game you if this is still around and the opponent doesn't have a lot of cards you're dealing two damage to them so definitely excellent and solid in an aggressive um deck um but it does put us into black um there's a war screecher fine two drop uh same polandrite druid just an excellent two drop as well but knowing that we're in white and apparition is excellent i think i'm fine taking it um we could just prioritize more um counters now that i think about it Maybe we can pick up some Tails Light Shields, some Palm Bright Druids, um, even some Amass Creatures in black can help. But overall, it has to be at the Apparition here. And we did pa pass up on the first one for La Rune Enforcer, um, so uh, so be it. Um, so now what? Um, there's a Lazo Reaver as a decent 2-drop. Um, Spark Reaper is a fine 3-drop as well, but works better in a more sacrifice-heavy deck, so you can get value for it in the late game. The white cards don't look too impressive. There's also a Gil Globe, which can help with Splash, but um, uh, given that we have a little bit of black, I think I just want to take a Laz of Reaver as a solid 2-drop. Um, don't hate it. There's also Saratok as a fine 5-drop, but uh, we don't. it's a kind of replaceable because it's really expensive and we do have a spark harvest as removal so we could just lean a little bit towards black and white black is tends to be a little bit aggressive with some life gain synergy and drain going on so uh, don't hate it here and war screecher looks nice mm, there's also toll of the invasion mm. some saw blue cards the best card in this pack has to be the last of plating but um, again this is more just like a counter spell in blue it's not really something that deals with the board or um, puts out a giant creature. Still an excellent card um, overall. There's War Screecher as our first, as our first one that we can use in the early game to fly and attack over. Um, there's Totally the Invasion as a fine three drop card as well. Vampire Opportunist as a fine late game mana sink. Spellkeeper Weird, but we're looking to play creature heavy in a creature heavy deck, not a more spells heavy deck. This would be excellent in blue red or blue black but um again we're in heavy white so we're looking to be more aggressive so what's our choice here um i think it's just the war screecher um we do have a bunch of twos already but i wouldn't mind another flyer 
works well in the late game, a great card to put counters on that can attack in um, and chip away some damage. Otherwise, it'd probably just be the toll of the invasion just to get a card for a card and a mass one, which seems decent. But for now, uh, like the worst creature, let's take it. Rising Populace seems decent as a fine three drop as well that can grow whenever a creature dies. Makes a little bit of a nightmare for the opponent to you know block and trade off creatures since this kind of gets value off of it. Otherwise, what is there? There's Typhoid Giant as a fine six drop card, but plays better and more slower, grind your um, black deck. So yeah, nothing much. I think I'm just gonna take the Rising Populace. And makes your Battalion I'm a big fan of in an aggressive deck. Does play really well if you have a lot of creatures in the early game. Just getting this with a counter is great. Um, has nice um, power stat line to beat for an aggressive deck. Otherwise, there's nothing much. Maybe the Opportunist, maybe Crunch. But I don't. But we picked up so many white cards now that we don't even know if we want to move into red. So makes your battalion it is. And now what? Um, maybe another Rising Populace can be fine. Guess like we could just be a mono white aggro deck, honestly. Because I don't think I want to pick up a Spark Reaper. Like it's okay, but it works better and with a lot more sacrifice tokens. Um, it could be fine against an opponent that uses a removal spell, but that's later in the game. We're looking to just get the round early and beat them down. So I think Rising Populace has more upside. And another Rising Populace. Well, there's an Iron Bully, which I think I'm happy taking over the Rising Populace now. Um, we have a lot of two drops, so I don't think I need a Snare Spinner. It can be a fine defense against Flyers, but um, overall, I think we can get there with Flyers of our own and uh, some removal spells. I have double Rising Populace. don't think I need another one. Um, yeah, I could just use the Iron Bully um, as a way to put counters onto our Flyers, which can be pretty nice. And also works well with the um, War Screecher, the Grateful Apparition. Um, don't hate it. Otherwise, Soren Sturrus commits us a little bit more heavy black. Fine removal spell, but it's better off if you're heavy black. So let's take the Iron Bully here. Uh, now what? Grim Initiate. And eh, these are kind of filler. Don't think I've ever played Ironclad Crowvon in this type of deck. I'd rather even just play the Lockstone Sergeant just because it has higher power. Um... Grim Initia needs is better off in a sacrifice heavy deck, which we're not. Don't think I'm playing War Skull Crocodile. I would even play Lazard of Behemoth over it just for the higher toughness, to be honest. So just ping him, pick Emergent Zone for the uh, gems, gem value, I guess. And maybe a Dust Mantle can make it if we're just committing to white black. Uh, who knows? Uh, maybe Bulwark Giant as a curve topper. Alright, um, so overall, um, what are we looking at the third pack? We are just looking to be heavy white for the most part. We could even just end up in mono white, believe it or not. Um, but I would like to maybe have some options open with like the Spark Harvest or Band Together. But other than that, we are looking to be complete aggro. We could move into white red, white black, white green. Hell, I might even say white blue, depending on what the packs offer us. So uh, let's see. Alright, um, is this a good deck to play on Nixilis? Maybe. Um, maybe it is, uh, maybe we don't really need it, to be honest, like, it does kill off a creature, deal some damage, but it makes the opponents draw cards, and it's quite expensive already, but in, the, in this type of deck, we're just looking to play a bunch of creatures and kill them, instead of just maybe using Omnixilis as an expensive interaction spell. Hmm. What else is in there, and why we have, like, again, the mediocre three drops that we have, we should, we're kind of, kind of stacked on twos and threes already. So I don't think I care too much. Calcis Missile is a nice interactive spell. Um, we could just take the Herald and just stick with the Black because we already have a Spark Harvest and a Reap and a uh, Last of Reaver um, and put another decent four drop. Um, I mean, the same argument can be made with Bloomhawk to be honest. And I think Bloomhawk is just a better card, um, just enabling Proliferate. We don't have a lot of counters to be honest, but we do have a Band Together. We could pick up more counter generators, to be honest, and this can be pretty aw awesome in a white-green proliferate deck. Um, overall, let's just see what happens if we're just mono-white. Maybe I don't think I'm playing Silverwing. I mean, I could find better fours, of course. So maybe the Bloomhawk is just an improvement over Lockstone Sergeant and Sahili Silverwing. Um, 
I think we're just looking for improvements overall in this deck. Um, so I don't really think I need the th other three drops. Our three drops are looking kind of stacked already. Um, no reason to move in the blue if we didn't pick up any. Yeah, I think I like the Bloom Hulk. It works well band together. And we do need some better four drops. We could play the Herald instead, in fact, mm, over these two cards. But I think Bloom Hulk offers a little bit more upside with the proliferate ability while Herald is a little bit slower and doesn't really give any value once it unless it dies. Um, so, and we have a grateful apparition to kind of um, try, kind of push for a proliferate heavy deck. So, I um, think I might be down for it. Um, so, otherwise, what are we taking? Like Omnixus Cruelty as another removal spell, but. Um, I mean, it could be fine, actually. We do have a Spark Harvest and a Lazda Reaver. But, I mean, I can definitely abandon the Lazda Reaver and just maybe just use the Spark Harvest as kind of our indication that we may want to move into black. But I think Bloom Hulk is just a better card overall that we just take it. Yeah. Let's try it out. And then we get rewarded. Well, there's another Band together as an excellent removal spell. There's also Yugen's Condren as an excellent card to proliferate into. Uh, otherwise, there's Thunder Drake, which is good, but we're never in blue. Black cards are shitty. So it's just between Yugen's Condren and Band together. I think we have enough creatures to beat down the opponent that we don't really need Yugen's Condren that heavy, that that much, that the Band together, the interaction spell, is much more important. We don't have many removal besides Divine Arrow, Band together, and... La Rue Enforcer, and therefore we can leverage some more. So, I think we can put the Spark Harvest aside for now, take the band together, and commit to a um, white green proliferate deck. Um, so, yeah, let's take it here for our final pack. And Challenger Troll is great. Um, ooh, there's a Krenko here. Hmm. But I don't think we can move into red, given that we took two band togethers. We would have to just give up on the green completely, and we took two solid removal spells, which works better in a aggro deck and then we would have to try to wish that our final cards are just red removal spells so yeah probably not going to take it i think the challenger troll is strong enough that we just take it excellent five drop makes it really hard for the opponent to attack pass um definitely works better if we can grow our creatures into four power but um yeah we could we do have a hole at five and we could use one so let's take it and now what's, I guess, in our War Screecher looks good. There's also Samut, which we, we can consider, but I don't think we're heavy green enough to take this. We're more heavy white. Um, could be fine, though, giving a creature plus two, plus one, scrying one, and uh, giving and giving all your creatures haste seems excellent in an aggro deck. But the flavor of this card is heavy green or heavy red. Um, I don't think we really want to take this, given that we don't have a lot of heavy, a lot of good green cards. So maybe just another War Screecher at just a... Uh, flyer in the early game that can ping in the opponent for a little bit maybe get a counter and in the late game you can uh, buff a bunch of creatures and get through so let's take it here Ooh, not a grateful apparition but we don't have anything to proliferate with i mean what else is there there's not much there's a jai's greeting that would have been great with krenko but i didn't want to take the risk uh so yeah, we don't have really any ways to put counters on the creatures besides his Iron Bully, but I guess we might as well take it because it's the best card in his pack for us. We might just play double battlefield promotion to just try to enable the um, the the, um, the the counters. So I don't mind playing two of them, given that we have double Grateful Apparition and also a Modifer Cause. And now what? Uh, we got some filler two drops. Um, given that we're more heavily Slanted, I think we just take another Pouncing Links, other than that, there's a Snare Spinner. But I don't think I'm playing any of these two, to be honest. I'd rather just have just one Pouncing Links, um, so... Yeah, I think I, I just take a Snare Spinner as a speculative blocker, in case we need more defense against Flyers. And there's a Vivian's Grizzly, but it's not an aggressive card. Could help us in the late game, however. Um, but that, I don't think I need Double Martyr for the cause, I think one should be fine. So let's put this in the sideboard. Triple Balfour promotion, maybe. Just to make sure that we have enough counters going on and that we're proliferating and we're dealing damage. But I think two can be over. I think three can be overkill, but we'll see. Happy with another makeshift battalion. Might just end up playing it. Uh, yeah. Well, we pass up on the hard fire, so 
maybe it was possible that we move into a uh, white red uh, with a Krenko, but um, unfortunately, uh, yep, didn't get there. But whatever, I think this is fine. Ooh, even the pouncing links. All right. Um, so looking at his deck, um, do we care about this um, Park Healing two? Probably not. Like it does help us win if we get to eight mana, but it is too damn expensive for us. We are looking to be an aggro deck for the most part, and we want to keep our curve low. So maybe we just cut it um, and go 16 lands. And then what's our final cut? Maybe just the Loxodon Sergeant. I do like these threes. Um, I think I might just play double battlefield promotion just to enable the um, the proliferate from the Grateful Apparition much more consistently. Goes well with the Wars creatures. Um, so I don't hate it. I think I'd rather have the Sahili Silverwing over Lockstun Sergeant just as an evasive attack run for. So maybe this is just our deck here. The Parhelion is just way too expensive. I would play if there's a lot more ramp. But for the time being, um, we don't have the ramp to get there. And this can get stuck in our hand. It can win the game if we get this to attack. Uh, but it is 8 lands, so it's going to take forever to get there. Um... Any cards that we're looking to cut. I think I like the double pouncing links. I think I like the double martyr. Um, martyr can be a little bit awkward, however. The fact that it's just a 2-2 and you would rather just have a counter first until this actually gets value. So maybe a dirt battle for promotion might be worth it. Um, is there any reason to play snare spinner over it? Probably not. Like, I think we can get there even if the opponent has Flyers. We're looking to be aggressive. This is a more defensive card. Vivian's like a late game card, to be honest. We're not looking to play to the late game. We're just looking to beat them down. So, I don't think any of these two green cards are worth it. Might be crazy, but I just might end up cutting a Martyr for a Battlefield promotion. Or just a Rising Populace, to be honest. Like, this can grow, but it's quite expensive at 3. Uh, maybe just one is fine, and then we have... If we can ensure our early game and right battlefield promotions, then we can easily proliferate and grow these creatures. Um, and make them much more of a larger threat. So yeah, let's try this deck out here. Um, so, uh, And our picture should just be uh, maybe just battlefield promotion. And looks like we are heavy white. For sure. Uh, yeah, heavy white with four green cards, but I think we might go need to just stick with nine seven. Like ten six might be too insane because we need to cast band togethers. Um, yeah, I think this should be fine sticking to nine seven, but this is sixteen land. Hmm. We could take the risk and just go ten six perhaps. Like we just need a single green to cast like Bloom Hulk, double band together and challenger troll. Maybe we don't need it as early. So um, I think this can be fine. Uh, so I think this is just going to be a really fast aggro deck. I don't probably don't need to upload a part two video for this. Maybe I do, but uh, we'll see. Um, so uh, yeah, let's get this show on the road. Hmm. I could just cut a pouncing links, perhaps, and put in, put in a rising populace. It could. This could just have more um, benefits, but this is a first striker on my turn. The one toughness is a bit of a problem though, unless you put a counter onto it. Eh, we'll see.
All right, um, Pouncing Links on two with Battlefield. We can try this out, and green mana for Band Together. And we're on the play. Hopefully we curve out into some better creatures, so let's just keep... All right, pawn some red, so he should have a lot of removal. So we could get punished casting this battlefield promotion. Um, so we should be careful here. Blue, red spells, definitely a lot of removal. Um, I could get punished again. Let me just play out the band, just play out the green, just to have band together up. So maybe I just hold on to this. I don't battlefield promotion yet. Uh, we are kind of lacking creatures in this early game, so it's a bit problematic. If he plays like Spore, Spell Gorge or Weird, we can easily band together on it and kill it out. So yeah, hmm, I might just main phase it. He's definitely not going to block um, this 2-1 first striker on my turn. So yeah, I think I, I'm fine taking this out. And we have another band together follow-up. This is just much more mana efficient. Um, and what now what? This doesn't help me scry, but it punches in for three, but I think I'm still going to attack for two. Opponent does have a nice, seems to have a nice blue-red spells deck. Um, another spell gorge of weird. Now what? I could band together on, or I can do it on my turn. Just to ensure that, um... Is there any one... Mana red spells that I could get punished by, maybe like Samud Sprint. So maybe I risk it just to be mana efficient. I could just attack on my turn, put up a battlefield promotion, and then if he tries to use removal, I take it out. Let's try that. Ooh, trusted Pegasus. Mm -hmm. Definitely attacking here, I think. You could have removal for the Pegasus next turn, hmm. In case, what happens? This is going to become a 3-3. I can still grow it by one and still, um, still band together on it, I guess. Yeah, it's, I can just cast it now, in fact. Hmm. Or I can just save it. Yeah, he probably has something next turn to remove this Pegasus. So maybe I just kill it now. And it's a pretty good target to kill. Because if he casts a spell, guess what? He's just going to um, get a buff from this. And I need to ban... Yeah, let's just get rid of it. Well, he could have the Sprint, which can punish me. But I can. I think I'm Battlefield Promotion if he uses, uses it. So uh, just going to end turn here. Just taking two of these hours is really nice with the, um, uh, so they can't grow. Okay, the Sahili seems annoying, but I can, I, this is still a first two, this is still a first striker. Prepare to marvel at my masterpieces. Uh, Kazmina, transmutation. Sure, I don't think I care too much. Um, I could attack next turn, give this first strike. Um, if he blocks, and then, you know, I get a nice token trade. Which doesn't seem that great, to be honest. I still get 2-2, two, two and I can punch in. And this kind of does something, so... Hmm. Definitely gonna play out the Pegasus here. I can hold on to land. I can actually just attack. Maybe I just don't attack. But it does give him one counter shorter, and I have a 2-2 two, two on the battlefield, so... Yeah, I think it's worth attacking here. And it's kind of makes it kind of makes him lose value with this um this transmute transmutation because now this two this is a potential 2-2 attacker. So I think I'm happy with this and we can say go. Well, giant is annoying. Um I could have maybe held on to his bell from promotion to dodge the Jaya, to but now burn. he's just gonna ping me. Here's lesson one. I could just attack it and um. Hmm. Well, there's another trusted Pegasus. 
I could attack and then he's forced to double block it. Or I can just develop the Trusted Pegasus if he minuses with it. I can just Battlefield Promotion in response. So yeah, I think I'm just going to hold on here. I'm, I'm going to try to force him to use the minus ability on this Jaya. And then I can just save my Trusted Pegasus. Well, he's just going to grow this Flyer, which is annoying. And again, another 1-1. One, one. Yeah, so White is definitely not the best um, archetype in this set. Does have some issues. A second Strix, okay. Um, do I save it? Probably not. I could. Hmm. So I could save this. And what happens? Um, he's just gonna double block the Pegasus next turn. Yeah, just let it resolve. Here's how it's done. He could just copy something and attack, and I can surprise him with the Battlefield promotion. He could have Jaya's greeting, of course. Um, ooh, Grateful Apparition seems solid. Hmm. I think I'm just going to attack with the Trusted Pegasus. Definitely the target here has to be the uh, Jaya. He's going to double block. I can first strike with it. He's going to let damage happen. Sure. Come find me when you want and me. I can play out the Grateful Apparition. Say go. I think he's um he thinks I have a Battlefield promotion for sure. So um he's kind of playing around it for the most part. I could Battlefield Promotion here and try to get a 1-1, but nah, I think I want to um, try to dissuade the double block. Ooh, Challenger Troll. Eh. Do we just play it out, perhaps? He could have Counter Spell, and maybe I just want him to counter the... And maybe he can't counter the... Um, the uh, Battlefield Promotion if he goes for a double block. He only has two cards, so maybe I don't play around it. Okay, he's going for it, so I can try something here with the um, Battlefield Promotion. So now he only has one fire to block this, which seems nice. And I guess we can say go. Going to take a little bit from this 1-1 here, but at least I got a nice trade-off. This 3-3 can start attacking this 5-5. Um, this Challenger Troll is going to do some work too. Um, no blocks. Definitely going to take two here. The opponent looks like he's just flooding out. Ooh, another Battlefield promotion. Do we just go for it? Yeah, maybe we just do. Or we just play out the Challenger Troll. Like, this uses up a whole turn. You could have counter spell, but eh, I don't think I care too much. Let's go for it. Uh, yeah, let's just go for it. I'm not going to waste my time. This counter spell would suck, but yeah. This is definitely scary for the opponent now. I have some good attacks on his Planeswalker. The uh, Thunder Drake, too. I can find ways to kill it. I think I'm playing out the land here. I think I'm definitely attacking, but not with a Grateful Apparition. Probably just going to attack with the uh, Pegasus here, and then the Challenger Troll at the face. And if he blocks my Trusted Pegasus, I can easily just um, Battlefield Promotion on it. Definitely want Order Drake first, hmm. and let's go for it. I could get punished by removal spell, but... uh. So now it's some excellent attackers in the air, a scary Grateful Apparition, should have tapped more efficiently, but he knows I'm out of cards anyway, so uh, pretty happy with the result. The opponent does have a scary deck with the Jaya, the double spell Gorge of Weird, and the Sahili. Um, so Battlefield Promotion definitely paying off, even though I drew three of them in the early game.
He could try to trick me into something. Um, I do like this War Screecher. But I think we're just going to move to attacks here. Maybe um, attack here. Attack like this. And kind of attack here. Definitely going to get the 2 2 flying. This to ensure that I can kill off Sahili if he blocks one of them. And he probably has a chump to challenge or troll too. Which I'm fine with. Ooh, we could have a trick here. Okay, sure. Alright. Well, he was going to do that anyways if I gave it flying, so... Um, I don't think that was a misplay. I mean, it maybe could have been misplay and I could just attack with these two and then the Martyr attacks on the ground, maybe offer a trade so it can proliferate, but uh, other than that, um, overall I think um, I think it would have been the same result. But now I give it this flying, it has a, it can be an invasive threat. To come up with a new plan. Now, Spore Screecher is excellent. I can attack with everything and then pump it for six. And I can also grow with proliferate, so... What would wipe me out is like a board wipe. Uh, like I hate cards like time wipe and like uh, maybe brutality. I forgot the name of that widespread brutality would just kill me. But I should have lethal next turn. Hmm. And I think I'm just going to attack with these three and then prepare to pump with the screecher. It just does a little bit more damage overall. Uh, d definitely not blocking here. Um... Ooh, another Grateful Apparition, so... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna attack with... Yeah, it's lethal anyway, so I don't care about the pump. You could have life gain, but I don't think there's any life gain in, um... In, um... In, um... In Red Blue that I don't care too much. I can easily just play another Grateful Apparition, in fact. Um... Sure. Well, I didn't play around. Well, yeah, I just play another apparition. This should be game over after this, and I, I just take seven here. I don't think he can kill me from seven. So, Balfour Promotion is doing some work. Maybe it might be too much, um, simply because I don't want to end up with three of them in my hand, they end up doing nothing. Um, so what's my creature? 18 creatures, 6 non-creatures, so yeah, maybe just three is fine. Having three, um, yeah, seems fine. Yep. And the 10-6 looks fine, I did draw my green last game, so... Don't think I reach eight mana, so par healing was definitely a fine cut. I would play if I had like a more mid-rangey white green deck with perhaps Centaur Nurturer or like um, the New Horizons.
All right, we have a game going. Um, why is my mouse so weird? Hope there's not a bug that affects me too much. Well, War Screecher on two, double band together, Battlefield promotion. Yeah, let's try this, and we're also on the draw. Hopefully, we get we can draw into us some three drops or some more two drops to leverage this hand. We'll like to be on the play of this type of deck, but um, whatever. RNG. Ooh, and that's a nice uh, three drop, so pretty happy there. We just need single forest, to be honest, to cast band together. So, um, happy just playing out the planes. Next turn to hide some info. He knows I'm white, but he doesn't know what the other second color is. Probably just follow up with a makeshift battalion attacking for one. Arlen's Wolf, hmm. So, Band Together doesn't kill it. I could Battlefield Promotion and just have a defensive one, but I think makeshift battalion just makes more sense, and we can kill that to turn after. And this kind of sways an attack, otherwise I'll be, I'm attacking him for one in the air, and then attacking him back for four. You could have removal, that would suck. Uh, hmm, do I block? Probably not, because I think we're the more aggressive deck, hopefully. Um, he's probably leaving up counter spell or something. We could play around it. I think we just need one forest for one band to get her, so... I think I'm happy attacking here, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully nothing, no annoying flash creatures. Yeah, I think we're good. Um, kind of this way, the counter spell, he could have that stupid four cost counter spell, but we're, we're definitely winning the race here, so I, I'm not scared of anything. Okay, the war skill croc is something we definitely need to deal with. Um, now, I'm, I'm happily, I'm happy banning together against this 3-2. So, um, if he attacks with it, so. I can't really ban together against the croc because it has hexproof, so just happy attack doing this. And do I attack? Yeah, I guess I attack. This is hexproof, but, um, I punish him with the battlefield promotion. I could play defense, but um, I think I'm gonna, I'm ahead in the long run by just attacking in like this. Yeah, long room force looks great. Then we can play a land. I could double battlefield promotion against him. We'll see. Maybe I can just take five. Save one. Save up a band together. Could have his own band together <laughs> as well. Yugen is busted. Okay. Sure. Oh, now we know he's, he's tapped out, so... Okay, so now what happens? Hmm, that's scary. I could potentially tap down a creature with a law rune of forcer and attack for three. And just try to, um... Do I band together this? Probably not. Mm, this is scary. I could battlefield promotion something. Maybe the flyer. So next turn I'm probably playing to tap this down and then attack with these two. He's probably going to block and I'm going to get a good battlefield promotion. So, hmm. Yugen's busted anyway, so um, yeah. Let's tap it down for now. Well, actually, mm, I can't tap down the token. So that's a problem. I can activate the War Screecher. Hmm. So now what? I could band together on the token and then attack with these two. And try to offer a... Um, trade. Jeez, that sounds really bad. Otherwise, what happens if I attack with these two? He's just going to block with the 2-2. Two, two. So I think I had to fire it off, as much as I hate to say it. Yeah, it only kills creatures, so... He does get a card out of this, which sucks. But I need to get this out of the way. I definitely need to kill this um, Yugen, so... I could just attack this to grow this. I could just attack with everything. He could get that nice value trait, but this grows at least, so... Yeah, I think I'm fine saying all this in. And, yeah, let's do the first strike damage. Get rid of his croc. 
roll my ward scale. That was not wise. Now I can attack past the um, the two twos, I guess. Kind of hate using this removal spell. Now he could follow with like a challenger troll, and I'll be in big trouble. Okay, that's good. At least this is dead. At least this is dead. Um, hopefully he can't get it back, and I still can hit him one in the air and lock down anything else. So um, well Arlen's annoying. Shit. Now how do I win against this? Well, I can battlefield promotion and then proliferate, which seems decent. And then we'll just play out the Bloom Hulk. I can't really tap this down because it's a token. Um, do I attack for three in the face or three at Arlen? Maybe just three at Arlen. Just so then the next trigger just is just a 2 2 wolf and this dies. So. Bloom Hulk, okay. So he can make one more 3 3 wolf and it and um this dies, but um So now what? I could still take four um and leave this behind as a 3 3 blocker. I can use a law room forcer to tap the Bloom Hulk whenever it enters combat. Um I like the martyr here, seems excellent. Do I care about this Arlen anymore? I could lock this down, attack, offer a trade with the 4-4. I could just attack with this, but and pump the war screw. Nah, I think that's a bad play. I think the martyr is a real play here. And we can lock down the um eh. I think I pressured the opponent. Eh. Actually, yeah, let's kill off Arlen. I don't want this to keep gaining him like infinite value, so. Uh, it might slow down the clock, but at least it's gone. Pre-combat, I can just lock down this Bloom Hulk. He's, she can just attack him for four. If we top deck bands together, I'm dead. I definitely need this war screecher to keep pumping in damage and uh, getting through. Um, Courage and Crisis is annoying, but um, sure, I guess I'll have to tap this down. More often than not, so let's tap it down. I could just offer a double block on this 5-5 five five if he decides to attack. Yeah, I think I'm double blocking. I could get blown out by a combat trick, but I think it's worth it. Just because we need to deal with this creature. And the Lava Fruit Enforcer is keeping this at bay, so. Alright, we still have um, a 3 3 attacking in the air. Now we have Pouncing Links. And, but the, and now the Lava Fruit Enforcer can just keep locking down the 6 6. So, um, I think we're still good. Thunder Drake is annoying, but at the end of the day, it's just a... Oh, he has a second spell, doesn't he? I guess I'll have to lock down the Law Rune, the, the Thunder Drake, um, so... On my turn, perhaps. But this is pretty annoying. Yeah, let's lock down the 7-7. Seven, seven. And I might just trade up, um... I might just, um, chump with this Martyr. But I guess not, so now I can lock down this Thunder Drake. Attack him for three. Hmm, I could just attack with him for everything. He's gonna block one of these. And that puts him to three. He's probably just gonna block the two-two. 
that puts him to three, and then I then I can kill next turn. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go for it. And he doesn't have lethal, and he's tapped out. So. Yeah, I don't think he can kill me from here, unless he has something really amazing. This is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So he needs 3 damage to get through. Um, and it's lethal next turn if I tap down this Thunder Drake and attack him for 3. If he has Bandigar, then I'm screwed, but, you know, he's top decking. Next turn he's dead anyway, so... Opponent could just have Giant Growth. Hopefully he doesn't have a secondary Flyer. Well, Nurturer saves him, but now that I guess the Martyr of the Cause can now chump. Yeah, definitely gonna tap down this Thunder Drake here. And we have another War Screecher in c to prevent lethal. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna play out my land here now. Maybe I don't, I can still hold on to it. And I think I'm chumping the Martyr Cause if he decides to attack with the 7-7, seven, because seven, that's a lot of damage. Law Rune Forcer definitely doing a lot of work in this matchup. Definitely a great card. Quite a solid overperformer. Okay, sure. So I'm definitely going to chump block this 8-8, eight, eight, and I'm definitely going to chump block this 6-7, because I have 3 on the way back for lethal. So... Pretty sweet victory. Chandra, excellent card in um, I I limited in M20. All right, let's move on. Alright, um, so we do need some two drops. We have double battlefield promotion. I guess maybe we can keep this with a three drop. Uh, we'll see. But I don't think I can mulligan this hand, to be honest. We should have enough lands to get there. Red is aggressive as well. Okay, well, um,. Sure. So what do I start out with? Hmm. A bully doesn't seem bad as a 2-2 menacer. He could just remove it, but which one is much more important? I think I'd rather make sure Battalion survive. Like, he could just um, play the um, the uh, Chandra's Power Helix. I could get punished for both. Maybe make sure Battalion is just better to kill, remove, because at least it can give a counter to a flyer and it can proliferate. So yeah, let's, let's play out the makeshift. And this is a little bit more damage in the early game. He didn't seem to have any instant speed interactions. Spell Gorger weird. Hmm. 
think I'm still attacking. Hmm, now what? I can do something strange. I can play out the Martyr. Hmm. And then uh, maybe put a counter on it. Maybe Iron Bully is just better. This can grow to an absurd amount though. So maybe I can set up something where, you know, he maybe ends up using a removal spell and I can battle for promotion on my own Martyr to cause to get a nice block on this. Yeah, maybe it's worth it. It is awkward putting a counter onto Martyr. I do have a second one though because it's meant to die to proliferate. Next turn I can Iron Bully and then leave up Battle for Promotion. I can definitely Iron Bully this makeshift battalion, leave up Battle for Promotions to do some work. So do I block here? Probably not, because he could use a removal spell and I can get totally punished. So yeah. Mm. I could try something here actually. Because mm. this is a scary card, he could just activate something and I can just Battlefield. Yeah, let's try it. I'm fine trading this. What do you have? Okay, Rouse Outburst is fine, but now... And that's 3 damage, right? So now I can battle for promotion and get rid of this Spellgorger Weird, at least. Ooh, Grateful Apparition looks excellent. Hmm. So now what? Maybe the Apparition. I could just put a counter on this. Maybe... It, it, yeah. Maybe it's better to put a counter on the, on the Bully, perhaps. Because they already has Menace. Yeah, let's put, on the, let's put on the Bully. Just to uh, spread the love, I guess. So, um... Because Grateful Apparition is a pretty high priority target for the opponent. And, um... If he kills this, then I'm going to lose two counters, and I still have a counter on Iron Bully. Okay, even internal, something. Definitely think... I'm definitely going to attack here, and then Battlefield Promotion. I could get punished, but I think I'm going to go for it. Um, he's going to suspect something, and that's fine. Hopefully he doesn't have any two-mana interactions, like... Um, Chandra's Power Helix, but I think I have to go for this, just to uh, get rid of this Flyer. And eventually start punching him for a lot. Okay, this is looking excellent. Another Martyr to follow up looks great. Battlefield Promotion doing a lot of work in this deck. Getting nice trades in the early game. Rushing down the opponent. Wow. Okay, sweet. I didn't expect Battlefield Promotion to do that much work, to be honest. Um... The function has excellent removal spells when it's in the early game. In the late game, is a little bit bad because the opponent can just play bigger creatures. But the fact that you are you're catching them, um, that you're catching them uh, when they least expect it is um, with the battle for prom promotion is quite cool. So I'm happy that this is happening. Um, and pick one, pack one out of this pack. Maybe just a melee as a cheap removal spell. Not a big fan. Mirror made. Um, the Artifact Enchantment deck in Eldrain Blue-White isn't that great, to be honest. The only good, good part about it was literally, literally just the Flyers and so forth. Um, so maybe just a Red Cat Melee as a pick one, pack one. But uh, let's continue on this draft. Um, yep, currently 3-0. and zero. Let's see how far this can go.
the, our big bomb Parhelion 2 um, is not in this deck, by the way, guys. It's our pick one, pack one. I don't think there's any bombs in this deck. The closest thing to probably a bomb is like the uh, Challenger Troll or the Pegasus. But other than that, it's just a highly functional, aggressive um, white, blue, uh, white, green deck. So. Alright, um, War Screecher on 2, and the Third Land gives us access to makeshift of battalions. Yeah, let's keep this. And we can eventually get a green to um, place down a Challenger Troll. Well, Razor, hmm. Well, that kind of scourges our flying plan, um, so hmm. we'll see uh, how this goes. We could just end up playing the Pouncing Links and Battlefield Promotion to attack across it, perhaps. Okay, the Crawl Stinger, hmm. Okay, so definitely the better play here is the uh, Pouncing Lynx. Maybe I just trade off for it. Who knows? Because this doesn't get past the Grazer without a um, without a counter anyways. Okay, Riders. So he's probably just going to attack with the Riders. No doubt. So, yep, no blocks. Hmm. Now what? I can only play one spell. Don't think the Flying matters. Um, this is a two-power creature. Maybe the worst creature can just block the Rubble Boat Riders, or I can easily take two. And I think I want to be more mana efficient. Put up the uh, makeshift battalion. Set something up with the Battlefield Promotion. Um, definitely not attacking, because he knows he could just block with this. So I'm probably going to attack with the makeshift battalion next turn. Um, he's probably going to... Um, Block with the Crawl Stinger, I can easily Battlefield Promotion. He could leave up mana for instant speed spells, which can be quite problematic. But um, hopefully, as long as I take out this Crawl Stinger and leave a 4-3 on the battlefield, that can potentially um, punch through this Rubble Belt Riders, it seems excellent. Hmm. So he definitely wants to force a block for the 2-1. I think I'm going to take it. I am feeling a little... Mm, I think, I, I think it's fine doing this just to force a pump spell. Um, like, it doesn't really do much against his battlefield anyways, so I like to trade. Um, <clears throat> so now what? I could just attack here. He blocks. We'll see what happens. He just lets it happen? Sure. Three free damage for us, and I guess I can double spell. Hmm. Maybe the worst creature is worth it. Yeah, let's play it. Let's play everything out. I don't think I need to keep up mana for battlefield promotion. I don't know why he attacked like that. Uh, now he doesn't really have any power to attack for two every turn with the zero four. Well, that's busted. Um, do I just take nine now? Maybe I just take the nine. And I try to do some crazy blocks with this 9-9. Well, now this is a 10-4. I think I'm just dead. So I can Battlefield Promotion to zero this 4 power creature next turn. Um, and then maybe Chump with the 2-2. Two -two. I think that might just be the play. I could get punished by with a removal spell, but Awaken the V2 Gazi is a busted card. Um, is there any way I can deal with this? Not really. I can't even tap it down with Law Rune Enforcer. Death, so I basically need to throw a bunch of creatures in front of it to kill it off. Um, but I'm fine chumping with the Martyr, and then next turn I can uh, and I can use the Battlefield Promotion on the make on the Rubber Belt Riders, get a, get a little bit of value, and then um, try to tri double block this 10-10. Cover removal, but I don't. But I think I, I. I don't think I'm gonna risk it. So let's see. Hmm. Definitely blocking here. Definitely blocking here, and probably just blocking like this. Cover removal, but I'm not playing around it. I think I have to do this.
And now we have a Challenger Troll as a fine way to block. I do lose I do lose two creatures, but um, at least this 10-10 is taken care of. And I have to deal with it, so... Thundering Ceratoc, this... Everything has Trample, but I can... I'll, I'll just take one damage, and I do need to double block this, unfortunately. Hmm, I could just chump it, though. No, it's too bad. Um, I could chump... Nah. We have to get rid of this. Otherwise, we're just not going to win. And I might just take four next turn. Um, maybe set up a double block and then activate the um, War Screecher. So, probably going to take four next turn, double block, activate the War Screecher to do a double trade onto this Thundering Ceratop. But I hate the fact that I'm losing all these creatures to... Um, I lost three creatures to a single um, Awaken the V2 Gazi. And I'm currently taking nine. Don't know what the opponent is thinking. Um, there's no good attacks. Um, I guess we just say go. I could block. Yeah, I guess I just say go. I could just double block and activate the War Screecher, to be honest. Don't really see the need to um, play, play out the Battlefield promotion. I could just put the Battlefield Promotion onto the Makeshift Battalion um, and then um, block it and then just turn and then maybe just block it the turn after, but it just will die anyways, so I think it's better just play it slow. Uh, let's think here. So if he attacks with everything, what happens? I can put up a nice double block by pumping, but one of them dies anyways. Yeah, let's play out the Pouncing Links. Let's just develop the board. I can't pump these, so I might have to do a double block, to be honest. Um, well, I guess he doesn't care. So, is there any point in putting a counter onto anything? Not really. Eh, lands good, so I can maybe battlefield promotion and pump. But there's, I have no reason to attack right now. Um, that's annoying. He can just keep finding creatures. Right, sure. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna stabilize against this opponent. I have 16 lands in the deck, so um, I'm definitely flooding out here, to be honest. And I don't think it's, um, it's definitely not the deck's problem. Just uh, top decking lands. Opponent is just going to outvalue me by finding creatures on top of his deck. Well, the Crunch Wrangler is annoying. Opponent just had that V2 Gazi, which I can't deal with. So, V2 Gazi is one of those busted rares in this um, set, too. It's that you can definitely deal with it, but um, the fact is. Um, The fact is, um, it does, it is kind of busted, in the sense that it can just trade off for so much. Samut's annoying. Okay. If you still have a home, you should go there now. So now what? Sure. My tolerance for cruelty died in the trial. So maybe I just block with the two one. I could give it for I could put a counter and give it first strike. Hmm. I could put a counter onto the makeshift battalion. That might just be better. So it can potentially trade off for a four five in the future. Hmm. Let's think here. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just gonna go like this. And then promotion makes sense. Just have a bigger creature and a and a way to trade off. I 
I could attack Samu, but he's a million. He has a million blockers. Yeah, Bloomhoke looks good now. I think I just play out the Bloomhoke. And now I can activate the War Screecher and make this, give this um, four five toughness, which can survive a potential attack against this invading Mana Core. Not attacking here. Don't think it's worth it. This is annoying. He does get scries off of this, but uh, maybe I can stall this game long enough to leverage a victory. Well, Angraf is dumb. Giving everything Menace is dumb. Yeah, Mitugazi is a busted You're card. Ramming speed. Maybe I'm just going to have to take the damage here from the Menace. I could just activate the War Screecher, to be honest. Next turn. I don't think I want to get rid of my War Screecher. You okay, that's annoying. Yeah, I think I have to take six here. Um, I could just double block with these two. Nah. Let's set up something better. Law Rune Enforcer. I can still tap. I can still um, activate War Screecher with it. I can just attack with both of these, I guess, and then activate War Screecher. I guess he would just double chump here. Um, he was probably going to double chump, give one of them. Um... So if I attack with both of these, what happens? Um, he's probably just going to double chump, perhaps. And um... and then next turn, he can just plus one of these. I, ha I can double block it. and uh... uh we'll, we'll, we'll try it. I think we need to kill these two planeswalkers. Otherwise, we're just kind of screwed. So yeah, I think we have to go for this. Sure, and he's chumping. Okay. Um, sure. I have witnessed enough destruction already. I think I'm dead, right? Because if he attacks with everything, I can only double block two, and the rest will just get through. Depends on how intelligent the, the opponent is, I guess, so. The only prize I desire is your head. Uh, let's see. Okay, so he's attacking everything. He is smart. Okay. So I can only double block two of those, so, yeah, it's game over. Well, first loss. Um, can't really be V2 Gazi in the early game, um, so. I don't really play around that card too often, but it is quite scary. Just like a 10-10 land, 9-9 land, that becomes a 10-10 with the proliferate. And I, and I had to throw away a Challenger Troll, a, um, a uh, makeshift battalion with a counter on it, um, and also a um, a Martyr to cause into it, so um, goes to show you how busted some of the rares can be in this set. But hey, you can end up drafting one yourself, so um, you never know. Oh, I guess I'm facing against the same opponent. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bots. Okay, so hopefully I can kill him before he puts down the V2 Gossi and I'm on play. So uh, let's try this out. And let's play the land. Let's see, go. Hopefully he doesn't have the Arbio Grazer on one. Okay, he doesn't have it. So now what? Hmm. Maybe we just put out the flyer and start getting in. I can, I can get him for a little bit more of Martyr if he doesn't have a blocker. 
I think it's worth risking it. Let's do it. Okay, um, the Crunch Wrangler is a little bit annoying. Hmm. Let's see here. I might just play out the makeshift about battalion attack with this 2-2. Two -two, just to uh, kind of make him keep this back. Um, but I don't care if he trades for this, to be honest. Sure. I still have my flyers in the air that can do some work, but... This 3-2 is definitely better. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to attack anyways with this makeshift battalion. Probably put a counter on it with the battlefield promotion if he decides to block. Yeah, let's go. Nice trade here and prevents him from fighting creatures. Um, we are facing against the same opponent again, so um, pretty annoying if he has that awakened the V2 Gazi. But luckily, I have some flyers that can get get around that. Okay, don't care about the Iron Bully unless he has like giant growth. I can punish him. But so I guess we just attack first. Yep, let's go. Good giant growth, and we can punish him with the um, band together. But now with Trusted Pegasus, I can give the makeshift battalion flying, and they can constantly grow counters onto it. So I can potentially race his uh, V2 Gazi deck. Uh, Thunder Ceratop. Okay, I don't care. I do have Bandit Garrett to remove it, and I probably will just do it since he's tapped out. Um, so yeah, let's just do it right now. I think it's a fine target to get rid of. And get him for a lot. So, yep. Guess we got our rematch. And, uh, yep. Good game. Yep. So now do I wait in the queue before I fight against his opponent again? Because I don't want to run into uh, B2 Gazi. Or should I, should I just search another one? Season of Growth. Eh, let's just go for another one. He probably... That was probably his last game. I don't know. And if we curve out like that again, we can potentially beat him. Currently 5-1. and one. Um... Probably just gonna play this out until I get to seven or I lose. Hopefully we aren't playing against the same opponent as the last one. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. S awesome. We're facing against someone new. Um, um, and we have La Rune on one, Swords Creature on two, perhaps Bandigare Battle for Promotion. We're on a draw, so uh, I think this is a keep. Then we have a Flyer on four that can potentially sneak in some damage. 
Ooh, Martyr on two. That seems fine. Um, he has playoffs a lot of reinforcer. Opponent's playing blue, so he's definitely more looking to mass more. Um, so what's the secondary color? We'll see. Okay, blue, black. He's playing control. Hmm. So more than likely, he should have a blocker next turn. Uh, definitely attacking for one here. Hmm. Let's stink. So we play out Martyr. Next turn we can just tap something down, play out the War Screecher, and get him for an extra two damage. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Ooh, okay, nothing. So, hmm. Guess we're just gonna attack with all the is just wondering if there's any flash creatures that I can get punished by. Probably not. Um, but if that does happen, I guess I'm gonna cast Band Together. If he counters my worst creature, that is fine. I have a Sahili Silverwing to follow up with. Um, he can no escape this, so I don't really care. Um, it's still a nice evasive flyer to get in a bunch of damage against the opponent. Okay, opponent has his first creature, a Relentless Advance. Hmm. Now, maybe this is a card I don't mind um, killing with the uh, Band Together. But then again, hmm, I could Band Together and just attack in, but I only get one extra point of damage. If I kill this, what happens? I can punch in for four. Maybe I just attack with the martyr, or maybe I just attack with the the air creature. And um, this can get potentially pretty big, so maybe I just attack first and try to get a battlefield promotion off. Yeah, let's try it out. If he blocks. I mean, I might be missing on two if he decides not to block, but um, if he blocks, um, I am getting value out of this battlefield promotion. And um, he's probably not going to do it. Okay, so yeah, let's just band together then. And this is worth killing, because I don't want this thing to grow. And whatever creature he plays next turn, we can uh, easily lock down with the Law Rune Enforcer, so... I could have done it on this turn when if he decides to mass again, therefore kind of punishing the amass, but it doesn't really because he's just going to get a creature out of it. So nothing here. He could be having, he could be holding out counter spell. Don't think there's any flash I need to be afraid of, and also commence the end game. It has double blue and a six mana, so I think I can afford to attack with everyone. Okay. Hmm. So now what? He could have a removal spell. Probably think about what card to remove here. Um, okay, Cruelty. Uh, double promotion doesn't save it, so yeah, it's good. It's gone now. You could have another removal. Okay, still taking three. Luckily, I have another follow-up flyer in the air. Um, so, Silverwing looks nice. Uh, Tithe Bear Giant on 6, sure. I can still lock it down with Lava Enforcer and punch in for 4. Is there a possibility that I should activate Bal put a Bal for a promotion on the Sahili Silverwing? Eh, I think I should just play out land, attack with everything, say go. You could have another Omnixos Cruelty, which would suck, but whatever. Okay, that's strange. Ooh, I guess he couldn't play anything. Okay, so I could battle for promotion on this end of turn or something. If he could play out the Tithe Bear Giant, I could just double battle for build, double battlefield promotion and go in for lethal if he's tapped out. Okay, um, opponent just passes again. Sure, I uh, don't think I need to cast this, and I think I'm just going to keep the land for now, see what happens. Okay, hmm. So now what? I guess I could just double battle for promotion now. Um, put one on the La Rune Enforcer. He could have Dovin's. Dovin's. Um, forgot the name of it. Dovin's. Uh, Dove the counter spell for Dovin, but this is exactly five. Don't care. So. Okay. Right. Got him. So good game. Alright, sweet. So we're currently 6-1. and one. 
Um, I forgot what that counter spell. The dove in the well, actually, he's black and um, blue. So I, I thought he had the white blue on counter spell that counters non creature spells. But uh, sweet. Um, currently, well, we're currently still five and one. So uh, yeah, let's get our six to one here and um, probably um, take some screenshots afterwards as our thumbnail and um, get up to seven. So. Alright, um, well, we have Great Fire Apparition on 2, a Battlefield Promotion War Screecher, and we're on the play, so don't think I can say no to this. So now, which one do we start out with? Um, we could start with a War Screecher, perhaps. Um, let's think. Well, if we start with the Great Fire Apparition, uh, we could put a counter on it and then keep growing it the next turn. But maybe it's just better to grow, out, grow the War Screecher, to be honest. Um... Maybe we save it in our hands, and uh, yeah, I think War Screecher makes more sense. Like, it can keep chipping in for one, but I don't think it's that important. One could be in a more aggressive deck than ours. Um, I think we're just going to attack in for one, see what happens. I could just play the Makeshift Battalion. Uh, so he's going to Chandra's, and I'm going to punish this by um, activating Battlefield Promotion. He should have done end of turn, like one damage is not that important. So I got value out of this, this is a nice 2-4 flyer. Still going to play out my white man to hide more in info. Um, next turn I might just play out the Grateful Apparition. Mayhem Devil's annoying, okay, you can still attack him for one. But, mm, double Grateful Apparition, well that's pretty busted. I could get punished for Chandra's um, Pyro Helix, but um, I, don't, I think I'm still doing this just to be mana efficient. Getting as much damage as possible, and then next turn we can band together and get rid of this annoying mayhem devil. He could have, he could just sacrifice a card here, a creature here, and deal one damage to my grateful apparition, which he's probably gonna do. Um, and I'm definitely not blocking here. He could just sacrifice the mayhem devil, I guess, or another creature to kill off the um, grateful apparition, which I don't mind to be honest. Um, sure. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, okay, sure. Um, hmm, now what? Maybe just a 3-3? Three, three? Yeah, sure. So I need to deal this Mayhem Devil, otherwise he's just gonna keep sacrificing stuff and he's gonna ping off my Grateful Apparition. Do I trade here? Hmm. Am I getting counters anytime soon? Like, this can be a fine trade, but I do need to get rid of this Chain Rip with Cyclops, so I think it's fine taking 3 for now. Um, so I guess I have a Martyr to play, which seems fine. Land. Yeah, I think it's fine taking out this Cyclops. Just punching in for a lot. Even though this could be a threat to my Grateful Apparition, I'm fine just attacking in like this. Punches pushes in a lot more damage. This is a little bit more scary to deal with since it's at 4 toughness. I don't think he has any more sacrifice fodder. Well, Sarkin is just game over, right? Um, we begin. Yeah. Your end has arrived. Sarkin's pretty dumb. So now what? We just send everything at Sarkin? I guess. Sure.
Well, um. <laughs> Watch this! Listen to them roar! But we have to kill Sark. Um, Sarkin. Come on. So. Uh, yeah, I think I'm fine killing off this Mayhem Devil. Sarkin was just a really powerful top deck, jeez. There's no way I can deal with this. But at least this is growing, but I don't know if we can survive a another dragon. It's a 6-5, so... But this Sarkin still does damage. Jeez, okay. So I don't know if I'm gonna kill him. Um, yeah, Sarkin's busted. Mighty man's power. I, I definitely need some removal spells against this. Um, and this isn't gonna do much. I just need to keep this behind the blocker. Hmm. So, yeah. Can't really beat a Sarkin on, um, exactly on five. Are you ready? Wondering why he's not attacking with this. Um, I guess he's keeping this behind. So, yeah, good game. Can't really kill Sarkin at all. Yeah, if he didn't have Sarkin, I think I would have had a better match. But... Some, again, Ward of Sparters, these busted planeswalkers that uh, you can't really deal with. So, uh, come on, let's try to get our six wins. At least we kind of made our gems back. Um, currently, 650. So, just one more win, and we can get up to 850 at least. So, um, yeah, let's go. Hopefully we don't... Okay, so it's not the same opponent. But, um, yeah, that last opponent was kind of scary with all the sacrifice going on. Uh, we'll all room four, so on one. Martyr causing the Iron Bully seems excellent. Definitely worth keeping this hand. We do need our green to get the band together going, but, um, hopefully we get there. We just need, um, we have six in the deck, so... It looks like there's red. At least the third land's out. Um, I think I'm gonna attack for one. Um, here... Next turn we can play out the Martyr, turn after we can play out Iron Bully, and I think I want to put the counter onto the Iron Bully, just because this is actually looking to tap itself. This is, um, we want to get value from Proliferate, so I don't want to put on the Martyr of the cause. It really depends on what he plays, to be honest. Burning Profit, hmm. Well, Balfour Promotion can be something. Eh... Maybe I'm just fine attacking with both. I could just tap this down, to be honest. I could play out the Iron Bully. Eh, let's send in the Martyr. I think it's fine, like, putting a counter on it with the Balfour promotion. Cause that w because um, Bring Profit is quite quite a nuisance to deal with. You could have another removal spell, but I'm wor I think it's worth doing this. Even though I'm kind of losing value with the, the counters. Um, just, just taking out the uh, Bring Profit is just something we need to do because otherwise he's just going to have an improved draw step every single turn with his uh spells so i could just get outrage i mean tri triumph here or jaya's greeting okay so that's annoying hopefully i get a band together going i could tap it down i guess so Ooh, trust the pegasus seems excellent definitely worth playing here maybe i could have like, maybe I shouldn't have played it out, because now he can use a removal spell on it. Maybe I should just bait out with an Iron Bully. But now the Martyr cause can be fine. Trade. Ooh, okay. That's scary. Um, no, I'm definitely not trading here. I think I'm fine taking two. I'm definitely ahead in the battle. Hmm. I could just try to attack with the Law Rune Forcer. Try to force a block, I guess. And battlefield it. And eh, maybe I just Iron Bully here. Attacking for six with the Trusted Pegasus. Hopefully, I don't get punished with this. I mean, the only thing, I mean, he just needs to kill my Trusted Pegasus, really. Um, but um, now he's going to get a Scry, maybe, with like Chandra's Outrage Triumph. But next turn, I might have the. Um, the uh, battlefield promotion up just to avoid um, 
Ooh, okay. So I have both Battlefield Promotion and Band Together up. So, hmm. I think I can take it slow. This has Menace, so I think I'm fine attacking the Iron Bully. This can gain me life and it can avoid, like, removal spells. I think this is fine and say go. On this combat step, I can just tap down the spell Gorger Weird. Contentious plan. Sure, that's a little bit scary. But it's still not lethal by any means. And I still have enough damage in the have enough damage to um to um to band together and take out take him out, so. I'm definitely tapping one of them down, but now the question is, do I band together a battle for promotion? Depends if he plays like, for example, Chandra's um, Triumph, I can just pump this up, so, yep, pretty nice there. Alright, so, uh, guess we got the 6 and 3, I'm pretty happy with this result, made back our gems, hopefully we get our 7, um, so, let's take a stupid picture of this dumb deck, play our final 1 or 2 games, I mean, our, our, our final game, Beat up, beat up our final boss, and, uh, yep. Let's see what the results are. So this is kind of looking like our deck. We're playing triple Balfour promotion just to have counters to proliferate with. Haven't seen Rising Populous once in this game, to be honest. It's better if you ca have a deck where you end up sacrificing more cards, which in this case we're looking to preserve our creatures more than often to fight past the opponents. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, and uh, let's play our final match, and um, let's power ourselves in the back. So, final boss, let's go. Okay, we're playing against the same opponent. Um, he's in red, blue spell, so we definitely need really an, a really aggressive start. Um, Grateful Apparition on two seems excellent, but we do need some plays. Hopefully, we can draw into something. I think we keep this. I think I'm fine keeping this, um, just because it, Apparition on two is pretty solid, and maybe we can get into a three drop or something. But um, right, please give me a three drop next turn. He could have like Chandra's Power Helix, which can be quite annoying here. Um, next turn he's probably going to play us. Ooh, okay. So this can grow, but luckily we have like Battlefield Promotion. I think I'm willing to just Battlefield Promotion and attack here, just to grow this. And I think I'm just going to do it and say screw it, because um, this is going to be a really difficult threat for him to face, and he's just going to constantly keep growing. So... I think this is the right play. I do get punished by Chandra's Triumph, but I think I'm willing to risk it here. Otherwise, this Debal Rager is just gonna... He's just gonna find a way to sacrifice this and kill it off. Spellgorger Weird, sure. And I can play out another Flyer next turn and uh, take him out. Yeah, I think I like the... I think I'm gonna um, hold on to the um, Band Together. Like, I could ban the now and attack him for 4, but I think it's much more mana efficient to get the Sahili Silverwing out. And by the way, this is going to be a 4 Toughness, which is really difficult for him to deal with. Another land. Okay, he's going to have 4 lands next turn. This is just a really scary 4-4 four four he needs to deal with. Um, next turn, I can play the Pouncing Lynx and leave up Band together or just use it. It would be pretty sick if I get a counter onto the Sahili Silverwing next turn. Sure, um, probably the Debalt's Rager. I can still block this 2-2. Um, so, whoa, that's nice. Okay, and a Battlefield Promotion too with the uh, Sahili Silverwing. Why not? Uh, yeah, I think it's just game over here. Unless he has a way to kill both of these. Um, 
We're just attacking for 7. We have Band to Getter up in case of any big creatures. Well, that's first strike first, but whatever. Um, I'm still growing this, so... Uh, yeah, good luck opponent. Next turn is just game over, unless you can deal with one of these creatures. Okay, Narsa doesn't do anything, I don't care. Um, this prevents me from drawing cards and he can find something. I don't think he can find anything at one mana. Perhaps he has two mana. Um, Jaya is a little bit too late to the party. So, um, yep, excellent, sweet. Um, got our nice 7 and 2 with this um, 16 land white green aggro deck with a low curve. So it still comes to show you guys how um, when you draft, you don't really need any bombs in your deck. You just really need like a solid curve and you can get there. Um, and this deck was pretty solid. Um, our bomb was the park healing, but we couldn't play it given that it was 8 mana. So uh, pretty happy the results. Um, going to upload this video and uh, have a wonderful day, guys. And uh, take care.